Hello, I'm Tom Gustafson, Instructor of Computer Information Systems at Lake Superior College in Duluth, Minnesota. Welcome to this fourth and final video on Windows 7 unattended installation. Very quickly reviewing, we talked about what is an unattended installation and we saw it's a hands-free hands installation. No interaction required because all the answers are in a file. We are using two resources for doing this unattended installation, the Windows 7 Enterprise Evaluation available at the website on your screen at no cost and the Windows Automated Installation Kit, also a free download from Microsoft. And We talked about downloading and installing uh, the Automated Installation Kit in a previous video. The elements of an unattended installation and the steps to an unattended installation are things we've already covered. We installed the Automated Installation Kit we created an unattended installation file in our last video and we used the system image manager to do that. Uh, we learned a little bit about these configuration passes that are uh, something you need to understand to use the system image manager to create this answer file. And after I created that answer file in the previous video, I took that auto unattend.xml file and I copied it to a flash drive and so it's on the root level of a flash drive. It needs to be there and it needs to be named exactly that auto unattend.xml because that's the file name that is being looked for by the setup program on the flash drive. All that remains to be done is to then to uh, start Windows setup and um, when we start Windows setup we should not have to do anything at all. However, we do meet, need to make sure that our computer will boot from the CD and we have to check our BIOS settings to make sure the CD is high in that list of um, boot, bootable devices. And one thing about using a virtual machine like I am, I discovered this the hard way, that your installation will freeze and not continue if you leave the USB in devices in your computer for the entire installation. So after the first reboot during the installation, you've got to pull those USB devices out. Unfortunately, that doesn't make this completely unattended. With a physical machine, that's not a concern, but with VirtualBox and VMware Workstation, it appears as if that's just a bug in the system. So the system will re reboot a few times and it'll be ready to go. It takes about 15 minutes for me to do this. Let's give it a try. I'm in VMware Workstation and I'm going to create a brand new virtual machine. So this is like a uh, brand new computer with an unformatted hard drive. I'll use typical settings. I will install the operating system later. Select that radio button. I don't like to use the easy installer for, for VMware. Um, prefer not to do that. We tell it what operating system will be used on this virtual machine, Windows 7, but uh, that does not install the operating system. That just sets a few configuration uh, values to match what's considered optimal for Windows 7. The virtual machine name, I'm going to call this Windows 7 Unattended, and the location is going to be in my documents folder, the virtual, mach virtual machines folder. The entire virtual machine is installed in a single folder and the name of the folder will be the same as my virtual machine name. I'm going to give it a 20 gigabyte disk. I don't need 40. Save that as a single file and there is my summary of what I'm going to do. Finish and I've just created a brand new virtual machine with a 20 gig hard drive but it's completely empty, unformatted, unpartitioned hard drive. So there are now a couple things I need to do. I need to put in the CD for Windows 7 Enterprise, the installation media. So I'll go to VM and settings and I'll go to the CD DVD item here and I'm going to say I want to use an ISO image file because that's all I have. I didn't burn a, a DVD and there is my um, ISO image file for Windows 7 Enterprise evaluation. So that's like putting a DVD in the drive. The other thing I need to do here is make sure that my VM has the correct BIOS setting so it will boot from that DVD. So I'm going to the VM menu to power and I'm going to power on to the BIOS. This is better than just turning the machine on and pressing F2 hoping that I'll get into the BIOS. The BIOS actually start, uh, 
the the window of opportunity for getting into the BIOS happens very quickly on a virtual machine because they boot so fast. So here I am in the BIOS. I'm going to right arrow three times, down arrow twice, press the plus key twice to move my CD-ROM to the top of my boot order, press F10 to exit, and pre press enter to it. accept that. And now my virtual machine is rebooting, and it should look to the CD-ROM drive and boot off of that Windows 7 installation DVD. While that's happening, another very important thing, way down here in the lower right corner is my Toshiba mass storage device. That's my USB drive. And I just clicked it and said connect, and then I'm clicking OK in the window that pops up. What that did was connected the USB flash drive to my virtual machine. Uh, your flash drive can either be connected to your virtual machine or to your physical machine, but not to both at the same time. So I just connected it to the virtual machine. I can't access it from my physical computer now, but I need it on my virtual machine to do the unattended installation. So now uh, my computer is booting from the DVD. It's starting Windows, and it will start the setup program. And if our auto-on-attend.xml file is located on the flash drive, and if it's properly formatted, we will not have to do another thing here for Windows uh, to install. The setup program will format, partition, and format the hard disk. It will install Windows. It will reboot a few times. The only thing I do need to do again, because I'm on a virtual machine, is pull out my flash drive after the first reboot. And this unattended installation should do its job. What I'm hoping to see here, very briefly, and there it is, is the installing Windows screen and it's copying files. If I did not have an unattend.xml file, a window would have popped up right here asking me what language I want to use. But it's already found that information in the auto unattend.xml file. Now all I have to do is wait for this installation to complete. So I'm going to pause this video and I will pick it up again after the installation is nearly done. Okay, we're back. After a couple of restarts and no human interaction at all, Windows 7 Enterprise setup appears to be completing on this computer. There wasn't anything I had to do. I did remove the USB drive after the first reboot just to be sure uh, because I have had problems with the installation freezing if I fail to do that. And there are some posts out on PMware's website explaining that problem. We're starting up Windows 7 here for the very first time. And uh, again, the last settings are applied, the out-of-box experience, and here we are. We're up and running in Windows 7 Enterprise. Now, we get this little box here by System Preparation Tool 3.14. This is called SysPrep. Oh, and we're also asked now what kind of a network this is. I'll just say it's a home network. The little box for SysPrep is a utility that we can use if we wish. I'm just going to cancel it. but if we want to make this computer usable to deploy multiple times, then we can uh, run this program called SysPrep. SysPrep will take a fresh installation of Windows, remove all the unique features of it, like the security identifier, the SID, the computer name, and other things, so that I can image this computer, deploy it out to other computers, and then those unique features will automatically be generated when that computer starts up. We don't want to take an image and deploy it out to a whole bunch of computers when they all have the same security identifier or they all have the same computer name. There are certain things that need to be unique on every computer. So that's what SysPrep is all about, and that's a topic for another lesson. So we will cancel this, and here we are up and running in Windows 7 Enterprise. Now. Recall that in our answer file, we indicated that Internet Explorer should have as its home page Google.com. And notice we start Internet Explorer for the very first time, and there it is. Google.com is our home page, and it's connecting right now, and hopefully we'll see Google's home page pop up in a moment. And it looks like it's working just fine. So we have completed an unattended installation of Windows 7 Enterprise using the Windows Automated Installation Kit. I hope you've enjoyed this series of four videos, and I hope to put more out here as well. 
If you'd like to contact me, just go to www.lsc.edu. You can find me there if you have any questions. Thank you.